When I get the PBS schedule, my job every month is to look at the PBS schedule as an advisory. <laughs> it is the national program service, it's not the national program schedule. So when I look at the NPS, I look at how I can build around it locally to attract and hold a public television audience and of course at some point attract new members to our schedule as well. So we take local programming which includes local issues from around the state that help build a schedule that I think speaks to everyone in the state that gets us. Because it's not just my four markets but all of, all of our programs actually air in Milwaukee as well so we have to consider that audience as well. So the local schedule is important, the local production is important but it has to actually still speak to what I consider to be the mindset of a public television audience. Um, two answers. The programmer should have a role um, and if they don't they should insist on one because programmers by and large are the ones who know more about the audience than anyone else at a local public television station. Um, plus a programmer is supposed to know what's going on nationally at other local public television stations so they have some sense of, of what works and what doesn't work. The second thing is, is that yes I do have a lot to do with local shows that come in through our door or that we go out and seek. One of them is Wisconsin Foodie, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, at one point, the producer came to us. He was buying airtime on an ABC affiliate to air this series, which is an interesting relationship because we looked at it and we're like, this deserves and needs to be on public television because it speaks to our audiences. So I've worked with Arthur now for three seasons to craft his um, series so that it appeals to a public television audience, but to also make sure that he is covering the topics and covering the ideas around the state that I know our audience will react to. So the show started out one way when he was buying time on an ABC affiliate, but now it's much better and I would say much, much different than it was when it was on ABC because we now have crafted it for a public television audience. And we do that with series, we do that with one-offs, we do that with um, people who come in who have an idea of just wanting to do television and we help try and funnel their ideas. For example, and I don't know if you've heard this yet, but we're acquiring a four episode pilot season of a show called Around the Farm Table. And it's this woman, her husband and her father, they're all farmers, have put together this amazing show that they produce in northern Wisconsin about local farming and small farming and small farming product. And we took a look at the pilot and we were jazzed by it, so we're going to, you know, go to a pilot. I think they do. I mean, because you have to have a different priority when it comes to local productions because you put so much effort, and that is time, resources, personnel, money, into local productions in the same way that you do, that in the way that you don't for the national productions. And so, for example, when we had our series in Wisconsin and our current series here and now, we know that there's a place for those shows in the schedule and we have to put them in a, in a part of the schedule that gives them every chance to succeed. And I'll give you an example of that. When we first started here and now, which is our weekly news and public affairs show, it was on Friday nights at 7 o'clock, the first half hour of prime time. And it was fine there, but it was languishing audience-wise, simply because news of public affairs generally has this glass ceiling in terms of an audience. People don't, people don't just fall into news and public affairs, they have to have a reason to come to it. So after several seasons of, I think, the ratings underperforming for that series, I took a look at it and said, this show needs a lead-in. So it was an, a simple answer, it was a simple fix. We took Gwen Eiffel's Washington Week and made it the lead-in to Here and Now, and now Here and Now's numbers are as high as Washington Week. So the audience increased, the loyalty increased, and I also think that uh, the impression of the show being kind of the state's record of what's going on politically and socially in the state is being the show to tune to to get that information. So we build the schedule around local shows simply because we put so many resources into them and they do reflect the sensibilities of obviously our viewers and our communities. The notion is, is that the PBS schedule in and of itself can't fill 24-7 in a local public television schedule. So what else can you use to attract new members and new viewers? And the syndicated content does that so well. If you take a series like Miss Fisher's Mysteries, which is produced by um, ABC in Australia, it's a brilliant series. It's a gorgeous series with a great lead. Um, and you put that on public television, our response and the response from around the country for stations who've already aired it has been tremendous because it's of high quality, it's um, very entertaining, the mysteries are good. Um, but once again, it's free and it's available over the air. And people don't have to buy DVDs or get a Netflix. <laughs> um, subscription to find it. They can get it on their local public television station. So the syndicated product is just as important to us as what we get from PBS. I'm not trying to set up a competitive um, arrangement or relationship between the two, 
but it's it is true at least for me and I think for most public television stations that the syndicated content is as important yeah I mean I think because our Saturday schedule and, and this it's actually changing over time and that's because of the availability of types of content for, for syndication but our Saturday schedule has always been successful with Britcoms and successful with light dramas like Lark Rise to Camelford or Doc Martin or uh, To the Matter Born, Balakis Angel if you want to go back several years. Those types of shows have not only large audiences but they have large members bases in them as well. And we've learned that over the years, especially when we started with Ballet Kiss Angel. So our Saturday schedule, and to some degree our Thursday schedule now, is very member heavy, and it's also very member attractive. So when we have a season finale coming up for Doc Martin or on um, Lark Rides to Candleford, we try and time out our seasons with those shows so that that season finale ends during a pledge period. So that we can go on the air, pledge that last episode live, talk to those members, talk to those viewers, and build support around acquisition programming like those shows. In general, the one thing that I, that I, I always say to other programmers a, around the country is, is that part of my job is to keep great programming on television. But the other part of the job that we don't talk about a lot is to keep bad programming off of public television because that's just as important. I mean, every programmer will tell you that we get hundreds of offers in a month from around the world and from around the country. And part of our job is to screen those, see if they have a place in the schedule, and to actually judge the content for what it is. I mean, you shouldn't air everything you get just because you get it. You shouldn't put it in your schedule just because you have time slots to fill. You have to be very strategic about everything that you put in your schedule. And it's not just the 21 hours of prime time. It's also early fringe, it's late fringe, and it's weekend. So you have to be extremely strategic. And when you look at local, you can expand that definition quite a bit. We produce local programming here, but we also air a lot of local programming from Milwaukee Station. We air a lot of local programming from TPT in Minnesota, and we air from the station in Iowa and the station in, in Nebraska. So that's how we continue to define local as being much broader than just WHA or than just Madison. Because people in the Midwest like programs about the Midwest, so why not take content from our Midwest stations and use it?